Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're taking a look at upgrading the Lenovo ThinkStation P330 desktop PC for 2025. And I have a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card and a 6 core 12 thread Xeon E-2236 CPU. Now this thing already has 32 gigs of 2,666 megahertz RAM, so we're good in that department. This should be a pretty awesome upgrade. Let's take a look at the inside of this PC. So my first impressions, though I like the compact size of this PC, this whole hard drive caddy and optical drive bay looks pretty intrusive, and I'm wondering if we'll be able to get the graphics card in there comfortably. So we can actually lift this whole assembly up but it does help to remove the front panel first, which you can do by lifting up these three tabs. Welcome to the jungle of cables. The cable management isn't really a huge deal to me in this case. I mean, you won't really be able to see it. One of the bigger things to highlight is that we have a 400 watt FSP group power supply that is 80 plus platinum. And one of the big reasons why I even purchased this PC in the first place there's an 8-pin PCIe connector. And what's important about that is that we only have a 10-pin power connector to the motherboard and a 4-pin connector up here for the CPU power. So replacing the power supply becomes a little bit complicated and you would need an adapter. Uh, but being that we have the 8-pin PCIe cable and 400 watts of power supply, we're pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to be installing a really huge power-hungry GPU in this thing. And up front we have an 80 millimeter air intake fan. Out back we have a 90 millimeter exhaust fan. And I have some high hopes for this CPU cooler. It's a little bit taller than usual. It has the same 80 millimeter fan that I'm used to seeing in Lenovo ThinkStations. But we also have what looks like a good advantage of three copper heat pipes coming out. So hopefully that translates to good cooling later on. As I mentioned before, we do have 32 gigabytes of 2,666 mega transfers per second RAM running in dual channel. And that is ECC memory, which the P330 fully supports. And we have two different M.2 slots here. One appears to be for a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And this one with the heat sink attached is for a M.2 NVMe SSD. I have an M.2 SATA 3 SSD that I'd like to test out in the system to see if it works. And if for some reason it doesn't, I do have a PCIe 3x4 NVMe SSD, both Timetech brand. And one of the reasons why I wanted to test out this M.2 SSD, it'll primarily be a Windows boot drive, and I might install an additional 2.5 inch SSD for storage or running games. And right now, as of November 2nd, 2025, we're experiencing really, really high SSD and RAM prices due to AI data centers buying up all the chips that would normally go to consumers, which is just the unfortunate reality of the times right now. So I have an excess of these M.2 SSDs that I think I might be utilizing if I can. So we'll test that out later. This is pretty awesome. On this motherboard, we have two full length PCIe 3.0 times 16 slots and one PCIe 3 times one slot for an expansion card or something like that. So we'll be probably installing the graphics card in the top one so it'll fit. And it looks like we have four SATA ports available on the board. One could be for that optical drive, but we do have four full-size SATA power ports coming directly from the motherboard because the optical drive has one of those little tiny ones. And I don't know exactly where you'd stuff in four full-size hard drives in this thing, but you could definitely connect two full-size 3.5 inch, one right here in the original caddy and one right here underneath the optical drive and maybe just find somewhere to fasten in some 2.5 inch drives. I'm pretty much taking the time to cover the basics here. There is actually a lot more to consider and I'll link to the platform specifications in a comment below. One thing I'll point out is that we seem to have an HDMI port adapter here connected from the motherboard to the back of the PC case. And the Xeon CPU that we're installing does actually have UHD graphics P630. So that means along with the GPU that we install with display ports over here, we'll also have the option of this HDMI port, two display ports, and that's pretty awesome. While we're here, I'll also point out we have an audio jack right here, a serial port, and two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A and two USB 2.0 and a gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port. Since we're talking about ports, I'll put the front panel back on briefly. 
Just to point out that we have 2 times USB 3.1 Gen 2 and 2 times USB 3.1 Gen 1. Also a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C, microphone and headphone jacks, power button, and there's that little optical drive. So I, I think that's enough talk for now. Let's get this CPU cooler off and get that CPU installed. The CPU that came with this PC is a Xeon E-2174G 4-core 8-thread CPU. And since we're taking this thing into 2025, having that 6-core 12-thread CPU, I'm thinking should help quite a bit. Here's another look at that CPU cooler. The fin stack is looking pretty good, especially compared to the stock ones from Lenovo ThinkStations that I'm used to seeing. And those three copper pipes go directly onto the CPU die, so that's pretty awesome. I have some Arctic MX-4 thermal paste to apply. Now the question we're all wondering, will the GPU fit? And heck yeah, it does. Now, I should have installed the SSD before I did that, but in the spirit of making my life difficult, let's just do it with everything installed. These two little red tabs just have to be moved in either direction to release the heatsink. It's really dark and hard to see under all this mess of cables, but right here, there's a little plastic piece that'll fit in the end of the M.2 SSD, so no worries about a screw. Kind of hard to see it, but right by my pinky finger right there. Having something like a headlamp really helps in these situations. And there we go, hopefully I don't have to take that thing out. So in order to get the PCIe plug to the GPU without creating a bulge that you can't get the front panel on, I threaded through the bottom of the 3.5 inch hard drive bay. I'll take this out. And there we go, it fits pretty snug. I wasn't planning on installing a 3.5 inch hard drive into this anyway. If you are, you might have to find a different solution than the one I did. All right, so now I'm gonna go plug this thing in and hopefully everything works. All right, so big success. The new CPU and the RAM are being recognized. Unfortunately, that M.2 SATA 3 SSD is not, so I believe we're not able to use that one. I'll just have to install the NVMe SSD instead. Okay, we are back in action with the NVMe SSD installed. And we can see here it's showing up in BIOS, so that's awesome. What I'm going to do now is install Windows. So I'll take a moment to do that and we'll come back with the final looks and we'll get to some benchmarks and tests. Thank you. 